All right, so we're going to look at a few equilibrium problems here, some multiple choice questions focusing on K, uh, KP, and KC. So first up, hope you can read this, but it's a, our classic decomposition of PCL5 into PCL3 and Cl2, both are all gases. Uh, and it says a pure sample of PCL5 is placed in a rigid, evacuated one liter container. Hooray for one liter. The initial pressure of the PCL5 is one atmospheres. And you can see that down here in our quote unquote vessel. Hold on. So again, we see this in our initial vessel, one atmosphere of pressure. And so the temperature is held constant, that's good, and we reach equilibrium with the decomposition products. And so we see our equilibrium vessel as well. Figure 2 shows us our equilibrium. All three gases are there, and we have a total pressure of 1.4 atmosphere, which will become important in a minute. But the first question says, as the reaction progresses towards equilibrium, the rate of the forward reaction does what? And yes, I know we just finished our unit on rates, but since we were talking about equilibrium in this question, I held off. So if you remember this fun little graph, and you see that as our reaction rate versus time, our forward reaction rate always starts at a very high value while our reverse reaction rate starts at zero and so over time the forward reaction rate decreases the reverse reaction rate increases until we hit the magical equilibrium spot where the rates are equal and so thinking of that graph then we can go back and answer that question and so we saw that the forward rate decreased. So we're looking at C and D as potential answer choices. C says it decreases to become a constant non-zero rate. D says it decreases to become zero. And that's not what happens in that graph. That's not what happens. We don't get to become zero. There is some products that are going back to become reactants vice versa, and so we do see that it decreases to become some non-zero rate. All right, question two. Question two is kind of fun because it says, which of the following statements about Kp, the equilibrium constant for the above reaction, is correct? And now again, don't fall into the game, okay? When they ask, oh, you need additional information, typically not, okay? There's enough information for that to be solved. And if we're looking to find the value of Kp, we should hopefully be thinking of ice, ice, baby. And so we have our reaction, again, the decomposition of PCl5. And hopefully you can recognize there's my ice table. And since I'm trying to find Kp, I'm doing a pressure ice table. And so it told me initially I had one atmosphere of pressure. Okay, again, this is our pressure. So one atmosphere of pressure, none of the PCL3 or Cl2. My change comes from the 1 to 1 to 1 mole ratio. So reactants minus x, products plus x, plus x. And so at equilibrium, 1 minus x, x and x. And so now you might be thinking, hmm, well, how am I going to solve for this x? And as I said before, that 1.4 atmospheres of pressure at equilibrium was going to come in handy. That's my total pressure of the three gases combined. So again, at equilibrium, if I added up those pressures in terms of x, it would equal 1.4. And so I can easily show that 1.4 equals 1 minus x plus x plus x. And so we can cancel out minus x and plus x. And when we do that, we simply end up with a, an answer of 0.4 atmospheres equaling x. Now that we have our x value, I can plug that in to my equilibrium row and when I do that for x and I plug it in and I set up my kp expression 
which is just like KC, except we're using pressures. So my products, PCL3 and Cl2, are x and x, so 0.4 times 0.4. And on the bottom is 1 minus x, so 1 minus 0.4 is 0.6. So essentially we get 0.16 divided by 0.6. We get 0.27, and so that would lead us to answer this question that our Kp value is less than 1. All right. Question three is exactly the same thing. Here we have COCl2 decomposing into carbon monoxide and chlorine. The only thing different here, as you see, is our total pressure is 1.2 atmosphere. So pause the video and see if you can set everything up and get the answer. This time we actually want the value of Kp. So that should have been your ice table. And again, working at equilibrium, when you add those up, it should have equaled 1.20. So you should have found 0.2 to equal x. Plug it into the equilibrium line and the Kp expression. Since we have our products are both x, so we have 0.2 times 0.2 divided by 1 minus 0.2. So you should have got an answer of 0.050. All right, so that's a handy tool, and that pops up fairly often on some AP tests. So question four is asking us, here we have some hydrogen and bromine making some hydrogen bromide. At a certain temperature, our Kc for this reaction is 2.0 times 10 to the fifth. What's the value of Kc for the reverse? Remember, that's just our reciprocal. So when we put 1 over 2 times 10 to the fifth, Hopefully on your calculator, you get letter B for your answer. All right, question five here. Hold on. All right, question five here. It's We see sulfur trioxide decomposing into sulfur dioxide and oxygen. And it says after the equilibrium is established, some pure oxygen is injected into the reaction vessel at a constant temperature. Why we're injecting product, I don't know. This is the question. Equilibrium is reestablished. Which of the following has a lower value compared to its value at our first equilibrium? Okay, so our K expression, if you're going to be messing with that, you might want to look at it. But so our, our K equilibrium, whether it's P or C, doesn't matter. Oh, come on, pen is going to equal my sulfur dioxide squared times O2 and on the bottom is SO3 squared. So if we add more O2, if I add more O2, poke, 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 all right, I'm going to be adding more products and the O2 is in the numerator of my K expression. So that would make my KC value or KP value get bigger. So A is out. Total pressure. Well, if I'm adding more gas, more gas, more particles, more collisions, more pressure. That's not lower. The amount of SO3. If I add O2, poke, poke, poke on the product side, it's going to shift to the left and make more of the SO3. The amount of O2, hmm, we're adding O2, we're injecting it. That's not it. And so hopefully you find that E, the amount of SO2, and that should match because if I poke, 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 add oxygen, and I make it go to the left. Oops, that's not my pen. Sorry. Oh, my board is not playing nice today. So, but if I make it go to the left, I'm going to be removing SO2. So there will be less SO2 in the reaction vessel after the re equilibrium is reestablished. All right, two more. Question six. Which of the following changes alone would cause a decrease in the value of K equilibrium, whether it be pressure or Kc? Well, 
When we mess with the volume, that means we change the pressure, and that would manipulate the equilibrium. So that's not a standalone thing. When we're changing the volume, we're changing the pressure, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just going to eliminate those right away. And also remember our catalysts, they just affect how fast we get to equilibrium. They don't affect our KEQ. And it should make sense to us that we're talking about the temperature. Remember our temperature, or I'm sorry, our K values are extremely temperature dependent. And so what we got to focus on is right here. Delta H is less than zero. So if delta H is less than zero, that would be negative. That means this is an exothermic reaction. And so what that means is heat is a product. And so since heat is a product, then when we add heat, quote unquote, that would mean that we are shifting the reaction to the left, reducing our amount of reactants. I'm so sorry, increasing our amount of reactants, reducing products. So again, exothermic, add heat, poke, 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 you're going to make the reaction go to the left. When you do that, there's more of this, more of that, less of this. And so in our K expression, which of course is product over reactants, if we have less product and more reactants, then we're going to have a smaller K value. And so our answer is increasing the temperature. All right, and last question. In which of the following systems would the number of moles of the substances present at equilibrium not be shifted by a change in the volume of the system at constant temperature? So if we're changing the volume, it's kind of like messing with Sas Sasquatch. <laughs> we're messing with pressure. All right, and in order for a change in pressure to not shift the equilibrium, we need to have equal moles of gas on both sides. If we have equal moles of gas on both sides of our equilibrium, then we're not going to experience any shifting. When it's unequal, then our reaction will shift depending on if we're adding pressure or decreasing pressure. So when I look at these, all right, I've got two moles of gas and I've got one and a half. Nope. Four moles of gas on this side, two moles over there. Nope. Three moles on this side, two moles. Nope. One mole, two mole. Nope. E again. So I've got two moles of gas on this side, two moles of gas on this side. So E will not be affected by the change in volume of the container, which ultimately changes the pressure, so the equilibrium would not be shifted. Alright, hope this helps, and I'll see you soon.